Okay, today we're going to start the Honors Pre-Calculus B Semester Exam Review Packet. And we're going to go ahead and start straight from, straight from the beginning with number one. So here's the function that they give us. And right away I'm going to go ahead and factor the bottom. So it's going to reveal some much needed information that we need. And let me make that a little bit clearer. So this is x plus 2, x minus 5 in the bottom. And to start out, um, let's go ahead and talk about the asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes are going to be x equals negative 2 x equals 5. That's where the denominator is 0, the horizontal asymptote. If you notice, the degree of the bottom is bigger, so that in turn the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. Okay, And the next part that they're going to ask us about is any um, coordinates or intercepts. So first the x-intercepts which there are none in this case. To find those, you would set the numerator equal to zero, but that's just a number here. The numerator will never be zero, so there are no x-intercepts. The y-intercepts is when x is zero, so if I plug in zero for x, I will get negative 3 tenths. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 3 tenths. Okay, so what they want us to do now is to do a rough sketch of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Go ahead and mark some of the important points. For example, uh, we have a vertical asymptote at negative 2. We have a horizontal asymptote at 0, and we have another vertical asymptote at 5. Okay. Notice how there's no x-intercepts here, so there's not going to be any crossing of a horizontal asymptote. Um, but we are going to need some test points here, so... And you can test these on your own, but if you plug in, for example, anything left over here, you will get a positive number in this area here. So I know that this will have a shape like so. If you do any test points over here, well, you have already have a test point in that area. You have the y-intercept at negative 3 tenths, which is about right there. Um, and if you do any other test points in this area between negative 2 and, and positive 5, you'll get points down here and down here. And again, you can check those on your own so that it'll look like this in the middle. And if you do test points to the right of 5, you'll get points in this positive region here. Okay, so there is the pr first problem right there. Let's move on to the second one. Here's number two. Oops. And we're going to go ahead and factor the bottom again right away. That's always your first step here. So that factors to x minus 2x plus 4. And they're asking very similar questions here. So vertical asymptotes, those will be positive 2, negative 4, those are values where the denominator becomes 0. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 again because the degree of the bottom is bigger. This has a degree of 2, this has a degree of 1. Some would call that heavy, uh, bottom heavy x-intercepts. This time we actually do have an x-intercept. 
if you set the numerator equal to zero and solve, you get an x-intercept of four zero, and then a y-intercept. If you plug in zero for x, you would get out positive one half. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and graph this guy again. And again, I'll leave it up to you to use some test points. Um, in other words, plug in values for x and see what you get out for y values. So we'll go ahead and first plot the vertical asymptotes. And the horizontal asymptote. So here we have um, an x-intercept at 4, 0. So this is one of those interesting cases where if you actually look at the graph, it will go like this. And let me draw a little bit smoother. So you can see here, if you do a test point here, you'll get a negative number. If you do a test point over here, you'll get a positive number. So it crosses right there. And I, the reason I know it crosses, the case that happens, is when there's a x-intercept and the horizontal aspect is 0, you always have that. If you use some test points in the middle section here, you will find that everything is positive, and it crosses the y-intercept you can actually use as a test point so that it goes like this. There is a case where it will go like this. That would be if the x-intercept, for example, for this problem was in this region, it would go down like that, but that is not the case here. And then if you do test points on this side, you'll find kind of this nice symmetry of having the graph down below there. Okay, so there is number two. So let's move on to number three. This one takes a little bit of a different format. And so to get us started with this, started with this one, I'm actually going to combine these two by multiplying it by x minus 3 on the side of the 2. Distribute the 2. Everything is now over x minus 3. So in the end, I have 2x minus 1 over x minus 3 is the actual graph, or the actual function if I wanted to look at it in, in the sense of the same format as the last one. Same questions here. Vertical asymptote will be x equals 3. That's where the denominator is 0. The horizontal asymptote, the degrees are the same here. So if you don't remember how to do that, what you do is you take the leading coefficient of the top divided by the leading coefficient of the bottom, and that is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so again, 2 divided by 1 gives us a horizontal asymptote of 2. The x-intercept, you can see if you set the numerator equal to 0, you'll get 1 half. The y-intercept, if you plug in 0 for x, you'll get 1 third. Okay, so there's all the information we need. Now we're going to go ahead and graph it. So we have a vertical asymptote at 3. So this one actually only has two sections since there's only one vertical asymptote. We have a horizontal asymptote at 2. 
Okay. And you know the x-intercept is one half zero. Um, and I just realized. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I was looking at the next problem. So we're good. So we have an x-intercept at one half zero. We have a y-intercept at zero one third. So those can be used as our test points here. So this goes like this. And if you do a test point over to the right of x equals 3, you will get that everything is above this line of 2. So it looks like this. Okay, so there is number 3. Let's move on to number 4. So again, go ahead and factor everything. The bottom is a difference of two squares. The top factors to x minus one, x minus six. And so this one is very interesting. You see that these cancel. Um, so this is the final function that I'm gonna answer all my questions about except for one thing. And that one thing is there will be a hole at x equals 6. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. So again, basing everything off of this function here, I will say the vertical asymptote is just x equals negative 6. Again, from setting the bottom here equal to 0. The horizontal asymptote, you can see the degrees are the same here. So I do 1 divided by 1, which is 1. X-intercept, plug in, uh, excuse me, set the numerator equal to 0. You'll get 1, 0 as your x-intercept. Y-intercept, plug in 0 for x. You get negative 1 sixth. Okay. And then coming back to this part here that these cancel, if I set x minus 6 equal to 0, I get positive 6. So there is a hole, in other words, a removable discontinuity at 6, comma. And then to find the y value, I would plug in 6, again coming from Setting this equal to 0, I get positive 6. Now I plug this 6 into this function that I'm basing all my information off of. And if I do that, I get um, 5 twelfths. So let me just summarize it again. This 6 comes from setting x minus 6 equal to 0 and solving. I get 6. Now I plug this 6 into this function, and I get out 5 twelfths. So I have a whole or a removable discontinuity at 5 twelfths. So let's look at the graph now. So we have a <clears throat> vertical asymptote at negative 6. We have a horizontal asymptote. Whoops. I'll make that a dashed line at 1. We have a x-intercept at 1, 0. We have a x-intercept at 1, 0. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1, 6. So we know that this is this may not look the prettiest. It's going to look something like this, just because I ran out of room. And you can kind of guess based on the pattern from the other graphs. The other part is going to be up here. Again, you can find that by using some test points. And you find that this part is up here above the line y equals 1. Uh, the other question that they ask here is the domain and range. So we'll say domain. If you look here horizontally, everything is covered except for negative 6, right? This value of x is not included. 
And I actually have one thing that I need to add to this graph that I forgot to add, and that is the whole. So at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5 twelfths, we'll estimate it about right there, there is a hole. So let me see if I can make this a little bit cleaner here. There's a hole right here. There we go. So the domain has everything except for the x values of 6 and negative 6 and 6. Okay. So we can say all real numbers, x not equal to negative 6, x not equal to positive 6. And finally, the range. You can see by looking at the graph, uh, covers everything except for, now this part you got to be careful with, the whole, the y value of this whole is 5 twelfths, and the horizontal asymptote of 1. So I'm going to say range is all real numbers, y not equal to 5 twelfths, y not equal to 1. Okay, so those are the first four problems, and we'll continue with this in the next section.